Hello, my name is Michael Ayling. I'm a specialist anaesthetist on the east coast of Australia and I'm producing the third in a series of videos on how to use the 3M 6000 series full face respirators for those who are involved in airway management of patients with known or suspected COVID-19. I've received a lot of questions about different types of cartridges, either ones they come with or which should people buy or what can they get hold of, what's the best to use, how to decontaminate them or whether they should dispose of them. So I'm going to cover as much as I can on that now. Now, of course, I'm not from 3M. This has not been reviewed by 3M. It has not therefore been necessarily endorsed by 3M, but I'm basing all my material on references provided by 3M, which are referenced uh, with other pandemics and provided to distributors of 3M products via 3M hygiene reps. So I'm reflecting a summary of, of the literature available from 3M. So in most shops in Australia at Bunnings, you'll see the 6000 series presented like this. Uh, it's a medium, most of them are medium, some are coming large, and others, other shops will call the paint suppliers and other trade shops will provide just the respirator on its own. It might be 6800 or 6900. The, the package here comes with a paint vapor filter which also has a pre-filter which, which is a particulate filter filter for p2 and i'll show you that now also it comes in a package like this which i'll be keeping in my shed for uh, any painting or weeding or any sort of things because i'm not going to use that so this is the filter that it cut the countries that it comes with it's got a 6001 vapor filter which is this side but the white section held in with this plastic housing is the only bit that's really useful for filtering viruses. That's a P2 or P3 filter if you're using a full face mask. That can come off with some difficulty. Now, the only issues I have with this is it's not intended for use as a medical device. So uh, that's why it's designed differently to the medical devices that I'll go into. This one's got quite a large aperture. So in theory, if you're walking around a ward that's got COVID people in it or a train station, you know, that's got no COVID people in it, you could, according to 3M, you could walk around pretty much indefinitely. But if you're in any risk of droplet exposure or any kind of other kind of splash, 3M sensibly leave it up to the clinician on the day to decide whether they're soiled or not. If you are soiled with droplets and given the aperture size of this and the access to that, I would bin it. So. If you get your mask in one of, or you respirate in one of those packages and you're using it uh, the first time, use this and then bin it and get something else. On the matter of something else, there's a lot of shortage of something else around the world. Initially, we got hold of the 2138s. This is just a P3 filter. It fits onto the side of the respirator, which I'll show you now. Just let me take, prepare that. So here's a respirator without any filters on it. You just get hold of this bayonet fitting in there. Now this one is only three evenly spaced holes. The others all have one uh, short, one narrow and one and two wide. Okay, so this way you place it over here, press it down while turning it until it locks. Now it's locked on. Again, it's a wide exposed surface of fabric I would consider this single use. Now, the jet, they go from between 24 to 28 Australian dollars a pair, so that's an expensive single use item if you're funding it yourself, which many people are. So, we keep a supply of these as a stopgap in case the others run out. The one that 3M use for their medical filters is the 6035. They also come as a 6038, which has some what they call nuisance gas filtration, but this is the particulate filter, which is a P3 standard filter. 6035. They are quite, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of shortage of it at the moment and some gouges in the UK in particular are trying to ask £110 for one pair. Uh, you can get them for 10 packs of 10 pairs. Um, usually their retail will be between 210 to $250. Some people are selling them for up to $400 which um, you know, depending on the urgency and available funds may be okay for you, but they're not very easy to get hold of and there's a worldwide shortage. This is what they call their pandemic or their medical filter. Um, and as you can see close up, there's a plastic housing completely covering the filter. Inside is a HEPA filter or a bit like an HME and the inhaled gas goes in the sides around and then out here. So this is reusable according to 3M for quote unquote, the duration of a pandemic wave. 
the duration of a pandemic wave. So how long does a pandemic wave go for? Well, the, it depends and probably nothing really matter. The information given by 3M is that these filters are designed to be used within an extremely polluted industrial environment and that the primary indication of when you should change a filter is if, you, if it's difficult to breathe. The rep has uh, told my sales representative that it's extremely unlikely in a medical situation to in encounter that degree of, of particular pollution from viruses or bacteria or whatever else is in the air. So in theory, they could filter almost indefinitely. So they just say, when you've finished your pandemic deployment or operation, then to chuck it out. So what, and I'll show you how this going. If you look quite carefully there, there's one narrow and two wide lugs. Match them up with the lugs on the, on the respirator. So here we go, narrow to narrow, wide to wide. Press firmly and twist gently with firm pressure until it locks into place, like that. We'll place the other one on. And pressing, gentle, 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 locks. Okay, then it looks like that. It's actually much lighter than the other filters. Uh, the, 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 than these ones, and you can use them for months in theory. So what we've decided to do in order to clean them, we don't have any uh, radiation sterilization facilities in our, in our hospital, I don't know of any that do, but I don't get the impression from what I've read that that is necessary. So when we're decontaminating the, uh, decontaminating the respirator after a case, we remove those, clean the, clean the respirator as per my other cleaning video, and we're going to wipe these down with a uh, an, anti an antimicrobial solution. Now, I would argue that isopropyl alcohol would be appropriate because it's only for a short duration because it can, over time, degrade various plastics and polymers. Uh, alternatively, you may be able to use uh, antimicrobial wipes such as Clinel, the green bag wipes, that can kill um, norovirus, which will remain active for 10 days on hard surfaces whereas the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus will only remain active on hard surfaces like plastic for up to 72 hours, according to a recent Lancet publication. So clean them all up. Probably I would think it'd be a good idea to point it down so that gravity stops any moisture from getting into the filter and then uh, dry them off or air dry them and then keep them in a bag till the next time. Or if you have your own respirator, keep them on the respirator till the next time. So that's it, that's what I've got. If you can find them, good luck. And please don't hoard them. Just get as many as you need with a couple or two or three in reserve. And hopefully we can uh, have a good solution uh, until we get more definitive equipment such as PAPA um, respirators. Okay, that's it. Thank you.